Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the May 7th, 2019 Council Committee meeting. My name is Stephanie Meyer, Council President and a Council Member from Ward 3, and I will be chairing this meeting. Besides myself, the committee members here tonight are Matt Zimmerman, Ward 1, Jim Neighbor, Ward 1, Eric Jenkins, Ward 2, Mike Kemling, Ward 2, Lisa larson Bunnell, Ward 3, Mickey Sandifer, Ward 4, and Lindsay Constance, Ward 4. Before we begin our agenda, I'd like to explain our procedures for public input. During the meeting, I will offer the opportunity for public input. If you would like to speak to the committee at any of those times, please go to the podium and I will ask that you state your name and address for the record and then you may offer your comments. So that members of the audience can hear you, I would ask that you speak directly into the microphone. By policy, comments are limited to five minutes and after you are finished, please sign the form on the podium to ensure we have an accurate record of your name and address. There are two items on tonight's agenda. The first item is the budget overview for the 2019-R-2020 budget process, revenues, reserves. City Manager Sunderman will introduce the 2019-R-2020 budget process, and Finance Director Rogers will review revenue collections and reserve projections. Welcome, Nolan. Thank you. I'll go ahead and have Maureen come up. And just first, just want to say welcome to the introduction of our 2019-2020 budget. I see a lot of additional folks in the room tonight, so I just want to also thank Maureen and Shelly. She's always behind the scenes with the finance department, and they always do a great job uh, putting this all together. And just also like to thank the staff uh, for all the work they do behind the scenes. So tonight's a little bit of a shorter uh, presentation, just kind of a highlights and overview. Uh, so Maureen will walk through that, and then we'll have a little bit more of an in-depth, longer meeting on the, the May 21st meeting. So that'll be a little bit more uh, in-depth. So tonight's just kind of a shorter, higher-level overview. So. With that, I'll turn it over to Maureen, and she's got a few areas that she'll focus on this evening. So, and as always, uh, feel free to reach out to staff if you have any additional questions or things that we need to dive into and take a look at. So, thank you. Good evening. Well, tonight we will look at some numbers, but they're not the budget numbers. We won't see any of the 
expenditures or um, fund balance totals till the 21st meeting and then we'll get into a little bit more detail then. Um, some items that we have to focus on in particular on this budget process and um, this is one that you've heard about before, the public safety radio replacement. And uh, the community center obviously is, is out there awaiting um, resolution. Um, unmet needs, we'll talk about those um, at the 21st meeting. The community center, um, we won't know the results and, <coughs> until after that meeting. So um, if there's a, an approval in that one, it would be on the June 4th committee meeting. And um, then um, one thing to always remember is that the need to, it, throughout the budget process, to maintain sound reserves and be able to maintain the city's AA1 bond rating. And as I just mentioned, the proposed community center, we would um, talk more about that on the 4th if the voters approve it. Um, the currently, um, the proposed budget includes the phase one um, consultant studies to uh, arrive at the project cost estimates. The yeah, sorry, <laughs> Eric. Hey, could I just ask a quick clarification on that? Um, has all that money spent or if say say it's not approved, just out of the blue, just as a, say it, if it doesn't approve by the voters, is all that $500,000 gone or is some, some of it be able to be brought back into the budget? Um, at this point, I don't think, it, and not all of the money that was approved last fall has actually been spent. Some of it has. I think it's going to come in uh, for that phase one a little bit less than what was approved. But we wanted to go ahead and put it in the budget oh, so I understand, that it's but, already I mean, Would it be recoverable if it weren't? That's just what I'm asking. Just is a what if? No, is it, it, some it's some recoverable funds, it, or is it pretty much all just written off? Or it, we will. We have paid those consultants, and so that money is is a um, already expended. Okay, that's what I'm trying to find out. Right. Thank you. Um, Oops, trying to get to go previous. Okay, sorry. Okay, um, the um, public safety radios, the uh, police department made a presentation last December, and the reason for the need to um, migrate to new radios is the new encryption technology. The estimated cost is about 1.2 million. Um, staff recommends um, using the county courthouse sales tax as the funding source. Um, if council would like to do something different, that's something that we probably need to talk about um, tonight or on the 21st. Um, the other option that we could do would be um, general obligation debt funding. The available revenue is around 1.1 million in 19R and in 20. You might recall that um, that sales tax came on in uh, June of 2017, and we uh, bought some storm sirens, and then mainly that money through the end of 18 has been used to fund a portion of Fire Station 74. So that brings us really to the end of the 2018 money. And so starting in 19, the money is um, unallocated at this point. Looking at how uh, the city finished 2018, I believe there was a little report that Nolan may have sent out to you. This comes right out of that report. Um, we ended up um, 220,000 to the good on revenues, which is a 0.4%. Um, that was pretty much due to a recovery of some FEMA money. So we actually came in uh, just slightly below the budget on revenues last year. Um, some of that was due to sales and use tax being a little bit below budget. Property tax was higher, but overall revenues came in 0.4%, very close to budget. Total expenditures were um, for the general fund were um, three point, just under 3.1 over, or I, I guess to the good. 
under budget for expenditures, 5.6%. And um, the result of that, um, reserves came in at the end of 18 at 45%, the same as they were in 17. And um, in, a little bit down from 2016. Historically, I showed this little chart last year um, of kind of the amounts each year since 28, 2008 that we came in below budget. And those have fluctuated a little bit. You can see during the recession, they were less. And then um, the reason that we've come in with good amounts under budget the last couple of years has been uh, related to weather. Snow removal prior to this year was um, very little snow events. And so over time and um, salt and sand and all of those things were not needed as much. Um, fuel costs were lower. Um, for quite a while, there's been um, retirements and um, periods of some vacancies and then people c coming on sometimes at less salaries. And so that has been going on and other cost saving strategies. But one thing to keep in mind is that even with um, good results as far as expenditures, the fund balance is, um, is not growing. Um, it's a healthy, strong fund balance, but the trend you could, is, is one thing to watch too. And um, Moody's watches the trends um, because cities in Kansas are very reliant on sales tax, which is a volatile um, revenue source that's very um, quickly responds to changes in the economy. Um, they definitely prefer that we keep higher than our target 30%. So again, our, our fund balance are very, is very strong, but just making sure that that trend stays up there. So we'll take a look at some assumptions for our major revenue sources, assessed valuation and property tax, sales tax, and some other sources. We traditionally have always kept our projections conservative in Shawnee, and sometimes that serves us very well. If we get into a situation like going into the recession where we we're pretty well prepared for that. Just as a uh, <clears throat> reminder, this is general fund revenue, just the main sources. There's in the uh, 2020 proposed, there's about 55 million in revenue total. And uh, the big sources are sales tax and property tax. The largest is sales tax at 24 million. And that just gives you a little idea of how those break out. In early March, the county appraiser came to visit us, as he does every year, and uh, he gives us some um, preliminary numbers based on what they've uh, just completed in their appraisal process in January and February. Uh, this is a little history. I've showed this for the last several years across the top is the tax year and then the bottom is the budget year. And uh, the, as you know, the tax bills go out in the fall and then the city um, receives distributions of that money, mainly in January and June, and there's some other small distributions in there. Um, this year, the, um, the projections from the appraiser were about 6.3% above last year. And then what we typically have do is um, reduce that a little bit. There are several reasons why we reduce it. Um, there are um, pretty much always appeals. Uh, lately, in the last couple years, there's been a little bit more appeals than normal. Um, you may recall all the discussion about dark store theory that was um, talked about in the last couple years. Um, Mr. Welcome gave us an update on that when he was here. There's a number of court cases outstanding, and he thinks that it could be as 
three to five years before some of those are settled. We don't know if it will be that long. So I went back and looked at our big box stores and they are still under appeal, almost all the big box. But at this point, we kind of are going with the methodology we did for the, the last year, it was to kind of uh, look at what our TIF contractual ob obligations are, which is something we have to cover out of this difference. And then also, what if maybe one or two of those stores settled and tr try to build in a little bit of, of a conservative buffer there. What's happened the last couple years, can't guarantee it will happen this year, is that usually the actual valuation there that, or the preliminary that we will get around June 15th will, comes in about halfway between what the appraiser has and what we have. So we'll see how it comes out this year. Just um, the, the talking point that everybody's is interested in this uh, you might remember from the community center conversation we said that one mill was 925,000 based on the 18 valuation uh, if we that 5.1 uh, percent increase that uh, staff is looking at brings us to around 970,000 for the value of one mill in 2020 and we'll know more when we get the actual preliminary valuation. And just to give an idea of scale, for every 1% increase in assessed valuation, the general fund goes up 177000 And then there's also two other funds that have a levy, the Public Safety Equipment Fund and the Debt Service Fund. So the total of those three, about 239000 Market value of homes went up quite a bit, 278000 So um, city tax on that would be $851, and monthly is $71. This little slide kind of gives just a picture of our 2018 assessed value and also the tax levy. You have, there, there's uh, three parts of the formula, the assessed value, the mill rate, and then the tax levy is the dollars. So this gives you the two pieces of that. Um, over here, um, the 18 value um, is broken out by residential, commercial, other vacant lots, various um, types of property ag. Um, and then the commercial that we track is was uh, 25.6. Think that was up a little bit from 25.4 the year before and then if you go over here this uh, 23 million is the real property part of the tax levy which is 96 percent of the whole levy is the real property the personal property and the utilities don't bring in a whole lot and this is the same little chart that um, you've seen before that shows the comparison of the different cities and their commercial valuation. And it hasn't changed very much over the years. It takes a, a lot of change to really move it. And uh, there, that's that same 25.6%. So moving up from last year. Um, looking at some national media and trends on uh, retail sales, January and February were pretty low nationwide. I think it was weather and I think the, at least in some areas, the um, holiday sales were pretty good. And so with it being ugly, there just wasn't a whole lot of spending. And um, what it looks like for March and April is that those sales have 
rebounded pretty well, and we're two months behind on our sales tax collection. So I'm, I'm hoping to see a good month in May for those March sales because we're running a little bit behind um, for 2019 year to date, which is just two months because we accrue back January and February to the year before. Um, we're 1.5% below the same time last year. And um, on the, I, I mentioned earlier that, that our sales tax for 18 was a little bit below budget. This just breaks out how those came out. And a little bit of scale, 1% increase in sales tax revenues, about 232000 in general fund. So it has a little bit more of an effect than the property tax. For the proposed budget, the revenue growth assumptions, as I said, they're conservative. And here's the 5.1%. And then in the out years, 21 through 29 of the 10-year forecast, we've been using around 2.5%. So that makes it a little more conservative. The idea is in a 10-year forecast, we don't, I mean, we're kind of overdue for a recession. We don't know when it'll be. So we try to pull those revenues down a little bit to create that conservative or cautious, I guess I'll say, um, forecast. For the tax lid, it looks like uh, from our preliminary calculations, we should be able to accommodate the all of the valuation increase without any um, limitation. We'll, do, we'll see what it actually comes in, but that's what it looks like now. So motor vehicle tax two percent. That some of these some of these are are around two percent. Several of them because that is a, a good ballpark of where they come in. It took sales city sales tax down a little bit. We've had more like two or two and a half. I took it down to one since it has been a little bit slower, and then bringing it back up a little bit to one and a half. In the past, we've looked at use tax as being a little bit higher growth. Um, what I've seen so far in the last maybe year and a half, though, the online sales are still pretty strong and growing fast, but there's also other things in the use tax. For instance, um, different businesses may invest in equipment or um, construction materials. Those are really hard for us to predict because we may get some use tax from a source for a while. We don't know really what's driving it or who's driving it. And then it just kind of disappears and something else shows up. And so it's pretty difficult to, to tell what those are. So you have different factors pushing and pulling that. So I pulled that back down a little bit closer to the sales tax. Hopefully, we'll continue to get to some more um, establishments that will keep helping us with our liquor tax. And um, electric and gas franchise are very um, dependent on what the weather does. So um, we try to keep those kind of in maybe 10-year actuals. We realize there are rate increases that are in there and, and as well, and we factor those in. Um, building permits was were a little bit down last year. That obviously is dependent on what comes in at a particular year. And then some of the other um, revenue sources like highway tax and stormwater fee grow just very little. Um, so uh, the, the the rates don't really change, and so they they have some small activity based on on different factors. A little bit about reserves. Um, the proposed budget um, would be 36% fund balance in the general fund for 19R and 31 for 20. And that's those are above our 30% target. We did end, or the, when we did the 19 budget, 
the it was at 33 percent so and the and 18 r was at 39 so there is a little bit there's that trend again of coming down a little bit from what it was and when i we show the 10-year forecast it typically has this pattern where is in the years go by the fund balance goes down because we don't spend all of our budget and it we hopefully refills and um so that pattern continues kind of the way that it it has um, the debt service fund and it, it reflects it matches the proposed CIP which you're going to hear about here in just a few minutes um, last year we talked about there being a little bit of unprogrammed capacity for maybe a seven and a half million something in that range project in 21 or 22 that is still pretty much the case um, there's a lot of cha or some changes that happened in the CIP. We were able to save some money um, with um, rates remaining low on the bond issue that we did earlier this year, which helped us out quite a bit. Um, also, um, just um, some of the changes, like on the Neiman now, the uh, smack money the additional money that we got there that helped us out but we've also added some um, new things so it it comes out about the same as it did before so the timetable next or the next meeting in two weeks is the big meeting where the departments get up there um, and uh, talk about work plans and accomplishments and things like that. Um, Nolan and I were thinking we might talk to um, Council President Meyer, see if there's uh, some ways we can streamline that just a little bit. Maybe that might be might be good. And um, we'll talk. We didn't. We're not going to talk tonight about the maintenance projects. We'll do those and next time and then unmet needs and then on june 4th the um, scdc and um, visit shawnee will do their presentations budget wrap up whatever that looks like and then perhaps talk about the community center and then june 18th would be up to you all if you want to have that meeting or not depending on where we are and then June 24th is scheduled to uh, set the public hearing for the budget, and then July 8th would be the public hearing and vote on the budget. And that's all I have tonight. Okay, thank you, Maureen. Are there any questions or discussion by the council? Okay, seeing none, is there anyone from the public who would like to speak to this item? Sir, yes, if you'll come up to the podium and state your name and address for the record. Thank you, everyone. Mm -hmm. Good evening. My name is AJ Sood, and I live in Ward 4, 6316 Alden Street, Shawnee, Kansas, 66216. The question I have for the lady here is that you mentioned that because of you, of course, you did not say that word, that uh, sales tax has been down this year because the government had a shutdown. Obviously, that was a major reason. Uh, what is the city doing to increase sales tax? I'm like, you said that the sales has been down due to online buying. So does the city have any plans to do something different uh, for the next two years? Go ahead, no one. The question is, what are the we doing to increase what, sales tax? Yes, how would you increase? What are those steps are you guys going to take to increase the sales tax in the city. Yeah, so we work Do you with, have any plans? Yeah, we, do there's any team there yeah, which work, works on those kind of programs? Yeah, we work with the Chamber of Commerce, the Economic Development Group, and so to attract um, new retail opportunities that would generate sales tax, new developments, as well as working with our existing businesses to expand as well. I also heard that, you know, she was saying that the most of the land is empty there are a lot of pockets of places which have not been developed for many many years and i know she has also mentioned in the past other people have mentioned that there's a tiff program uh, she brought up some conversation about the tiff so is the city only dependent that if tiff program is given to new investors 
then only we get new retail outlets or any other business uh, places in the area or we just give opportunities to other places you know, other ways of also bringing some new uh, investors in the city yeah tiff's one of the incentives within that uh, toolbox if you will to attract uh, new development but it's not necessarily a requirement and that's up to the governing body whether to approve a TIF package. I think what Finance Director Rogers was referencing is we have to kind of include that when we're looking at that uh, future growth, kind of in that appraised uh, assessed valuation and looking at that revenue. So with that property tax, uh, TIF impacts that property tax. And so depending on each development, we have to account for that. Within our budget. In, in your conversation just now, you said that you talked to the EDC. Uh, have you any immediate plans of developing some of the empty spots because I see a lot of them. So is the city working on that for this year? Yes. What have you done? I'm like, well, well there's, a variety, there's a variety of programs that we do. The EDC works with uh, potential developers to attract new retail through various recruitment strategies, as I mentioned earlier, as well as expanding uh, you know, additional locations or expanding existing businesses. Okay, so you're working on this year as the, as the numbers are, like going to go up? for that reason? Well, I mean, we're, we're working on potential projects, yes. The other thing I have is a question where the city is having the Shawnee Days coming up last, uh, I think it's coming next month, I believe, June. Am I right? June, it comes on June, some days of June. Second mm -hmm, all yeah. Shawnee Days, yep. Yes. Last year when I visited that location, I have been going there for so many years. So what is the city doing to bring some new folks out there? I see the same old faces. Uh, I've spoken to many people out there. Uh, nobody does any marketing job on bringing some new folks from you know, Asian countries or any other Asian booths. So what is the city going to do about that? Uh, I think those booths are opportunities that people can rent a booth. I don't know that the, I don't have the uh, policy in front of me that the old Shiny Days Committee uh, has, but go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, Mickey, go ahead. The booths work as first come first serve after the people that have been here last year okay have first chance to to participate come back, to uh -huh. come back and participate again mm -hmm. the booths that are left over because the town is changing off and on different amount of booth space spaces become available and, and unavailable so as of out searching for people we really don't need to we have a waiting list I see. So if there's people from other countries that would like to get into it, mm -hmm. they need to contact us. Yeah, but how do you advertise? A lot of people don't we're even in know. The, we're in the magazine, the tourism magazine for the state of Kansas, uh -huh. uh, for the county, mm -hmm. and we are very accessible. People all over the country, if they ever need to get a hold of us, they contact us. So if somebody wants to get in touch with us, uh -huh. all they have to do is, is look us up. Right. What I'm saying is what I have come across many people, what they say is that we do not even know that how to reach the which person to reach means they don't have access. There's of a course. website. All they have to Check. do is get on the website that tells I'm over booths. I'm the I'm the board member over booths for old Shoney days. I see. By the way, how many booths are there? About 334 isn't it this year? How many? 134 this year. And sir, you are at your five minute comment limit. So I would ask for you to wrap it up if you don't mind. Thank you so much. You bet. That was Thank the last you. thing I had. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. Okay. Is there anyone else from the public who would like to speak on this item? Okay. Seeing none, this is uh, for informational purposes only. So we will move on to the second item of the agenda, which is to review the 2020 through 2029 capital improvement plan. The city's CIP includes projects that exceed $150,000 in cost and encompasses streets, stormwater, parks, facilities, and traffic control. Assistant Public Works Director Matt Pearl will make a presentation. Welcome, Matt. Thank you. Good evening. Um, last year, we did a six-year CIP. Um, this year, we've moved it up to a 10-year CIP to better um, coincide with the budget and the um, forecast that our fin finance department put together. Um, here's a little overview of what we'll be talking about tonight. Um, we're just going to hit some highlights of projects. Um, the complete summary of all the projects was supplied in the packet. <coughs> Um, so we're, we'll hit on current year's projects, um, the next six years of projects from 20 to 25, and then 
we'll talk about what happens after 2025 as far as sales tax um, and sunsetting of certain things. Um, and then we'll talk about next steps for this process and then discussion or question. So here we go. Uh, here's just a map of all the proposed CIP projects. Um, it does not include any of the maintenance projects because those locations are not known yet. Um, but this is any project that has an actual location attributed to it. Um, it's separated out by a year and color, um, 2019 being current year of construction. Um, we've got a lot going on this year. so. Uh, diving right into some of the projects, the 2019 Johnson Drive and Widmer culvert repair and lining. Um, this is a stormwater project that is part of our $8 million bond that we have in place. Um, there are six projects in that bond. Um, this one is estimated right around 2.3 million, I believe. but. The big note here is that um, there will be some traffic control on Johnson Drive. Um, there'll be two lanes open during construction. Um, we won't do a full closure on Johnson Drive. Um, and we are doing about 1,400 linear feet of pipe for this repair. Um, it runs all the way from the south side of Johnson Drive to the neighborhood to the north. Um, Lakeview Estates, I believe, is the neighborhood. So. Next project is Quivira Drive and Park. Um, this one will be a full closure. We are anticipating it to be done this summer while the schools are closed. Um, so we won't affect any of that traffic. Um, the culverts under Quivira Drive are in failure mode. So this is a needed project. It is also part of the $8 million, $8 million bond that we have in place. Blackfish Parkway and Hauser. This one will also be a full road closure. Um, again, we are planning on doing this project this summer. Um, the culvert's under Blackfish Parkway, old CMP pipe. It has rusted out. Um, so this is a very immediate need. Um, we have received bids on this project. Um, you guys will be receiving that council memo, I think next Monday night, so. Um, this one is also part of the $8 million bond project. Moving on to 2020, um, we have the 75th Street Corridor um, from Schweitzer to Quivira. Uh, this is actually funded with 2019 CARS funds, but we are going to construct it in 2020 due to uh, a grant we received with planning sustainable places. Um, we're looking at some streetscape items and and some other opportunities with that grant. Um, the need, meeting, uh, we are doing a neighborhood meeting next Tuesday night to get input on some of those items. Um, this will be a, a complete redo of the street, um, curb, gutter, sidewalk, uh, overlay of the asphalt, and also intersection improvements at John, or 75th and Movera. In 2020, we also have Flum Road from Midland Drive to the South City Limits. Um, this project was added this year um, due to some immediate needs with the storm drainage. Um, this also will be a complete redo of the street, curb gutter, um, sidewalk repairs, uh, obviously storm drainage improvements. And then we also will upgrade any existing street lights to LED fixtures. Yeah, Mickey. On 75th and Quivira, is Lenexa paying part of that, uh, the light? Yes, they are. Okay, good. <laughs> the light system. Traffic lights, yes. Uh, 60th Street from Flint to Neiman. This will be our second SIP Street. Um, with these SIP streets, we are reviewing those every time we do a SIP street to make sure they meet the criteria that was established when, when those projects were selected originally. Um, this will, just like Flint, this will be a reconstruction of the whole street, um, widening sidewalks, trails, new storm drainage, uh, new street lights. 
We also have additional funding source in this one with our CDBG grant that we get. Um, so that, that helps with this project. Next project in 2020 is a new park, 55th Street and Belmont. We own about 40 acres of land there. Um, I believe they are going to do the de start design in late 2019 and all the amenities and improvements will be um, shown at, those, at that time. Also in 2020, we have an expansion of the Shawnee Town 1929. Um, we have had the opportunity to look at a old historic house out at 135th and Mission. Um, the house is gonna be donated to the city and we are looking to relocate it from that location to Shawnee Town, 1929. So there'll be a new foundation poured once the house is moved. And there you go. 2021 is phase one of Monticello Road from Shawnee Parkway to 71st Street. This will also be a complete reconstruction, uh, widening, installation of curb and gutter, sidewalks, trails, storm drainage, um, lighting improvements. Along with this project, there's also a necessity of a relocation of a Southern Star pipeline. So talks have been had with them already and that process is initiated. Um, in 2022, we have the second phase of Monticello. So 2021, we have 67th and Cottonwood storm drainage improvements. This project is to hopefully alleviate flooding of six homes and two streets at the intersection of 67 and Cottonwood. Um, this project is eligible for Johnson County SMAC funding and the work will entail culvert work under 67th Street as well as work under Cottonwood Street and then channel improvements in the rear yards at that intersection. Yeah, Eric. Yeah, while you're on that one, we talked about the SMAC funding and the county came in and talked about their changes they're going to make to the, to the SMAC funding program. And is, is it still currently going to be available in this year to get SMAC funding or are we going to be in the, under that new concept of drainage basin? Or Doug Whitaker will be able to answer that. Because, yeah, I'm <laughs> Doug just, Whitaker, public works director. The 2019 program will stay as is. So any funding that was in 19 is still gonna follow. 20 is when they're gonna start kind of easing in. My understanding is when they would start easing in that maintenance portion, which was the lower, but they're still keeping funding a, a pretty good size for flooding issues and like that, that you know we have used that, which is what the fund had been used for in the past. Right, project this point. It's been project specific in the past, but they were talking about moving to a new system. I'm just trying to get, make sure we understand when the dead, when the, timelines are for that tr transition. So 2019, we're still basically working under the old system is what you're saying? Right. And, and it'll be kind of a partial in 2020? 2020, they're phasing it in and they're only using a, a minor, you know, what was it, three or four million? I can't remember the number. He was here that night. Yeah, that much. would be chunked out for the maintenance projects. Right. However, they were still keeping eight or nine million dollars towards, you know, flooding type issues and like that, like they've always funded in the past. Okay, thanks, Doug. Lindsay. Um, <clears throat> at what point will will we have either one um, neighborhood meetings um, on Monticello Road specifically for those on the east side of the street? I know there was talk of getting some of their input, um, the ones whose properties will most be affected. Sure, I'll, I'll let Paul Lindstrom talk about Monticello Road a little bit. <laughs> uh, good evening, Paul Lindstrom, uh, senior project engineer. So I would anticipate um, after we get an agreement with Southern Star, um, which will be probably in another 30 to 60 days, uh, we'll uh, get back with our HNTB, which is our consultant at the time. And once we regroup with them, um, we will then have a public meeting. Um, right now, we do not anticipate changing any of the plans. So that would just be a... Um, a meeting just to reiterate what we had planned for I guess it was about 2008 so so that would be later this year Steph yeah Jim Excuse me, Paul while you're here 
Southern Star keeps coming up like a what bad dream. Uh, so 2008, there was a lot done out there in Monticello. Uh, what different is going to be done here now? Are we just trying to reestablish the guidelines, if you will? Guidelines, perhaps, is a poor word. Just reestablish what the responsibilities are. Sure. Back in 2008, um, we actually had an agreement with Southern Star, and the next step was to pay them roughly, I think it was one point. $1 million so they could start their design work and, and construction. Um, before that started, before we wrote that check, that's when we, okay. we canceled the project or po postponed the project. Um, so nothing is gonna change. Their alignment is still as it was proposed back in 2008. The only thing they're doing now is reevaluating the costs. So that if the agreement then has to be revised for any additional cost, I'm assuming it's not gonna go down, it's probably gonna go up. <laughs> um, so right now they're doing that and also evaluating whether that's the best fit for them, but I have not heard anything different, but uh, I still believe they're doing the same alignment as they proposed. Okay, thank you. Yep. Eric. <clears throat> yeah, just one other question on that with the, with the pipeline. When we discussed some of the underground utilities, moving the utilities underground up here on Neiman, we did talk in terms of the city does have some rights when people have their lines crossing into our rights away where we need to do work, that we have some, I think Ellis did mention the fact we have some sort of uh, capability of, of putting some onus upon them to work with us on that and not just sit back and say, you got to meet my way. Is it, was that a misconception I came away from that meeting or do we have some, some rights here since they're you know, right to our road. We're trying to improve our road. Uh, unfortunately, Southern Star is a different monster. Um, they are, they don't own, they don't answer to anybody but the federal government. Mm -hmm. So they're not like our typical utilities. I mean, is that, that correct? Is that, am I saying that correctly? <laughs> but I, I don't think they are it's typically like our local gas and, and other utilities. We, we learned a lot from that last project. Um, some of it was something we'd just as soon forget. But uh, they have the power of eminent domain to the federal court as well. And so they trump us in many ways that we're not used to being trumped as a, as a local agency with a state court eminent domain authority. And I think that may be what you're recalling is that we kept running into uh, whether they were there first whether, and who had authority to be there first and then whether our authority trumped their authority. And um, I think the city had right of way there. That was actually the old road that went from Fort Leavenworth to um, Fort Scott. Does that ring, ring yeah. a bell? And, and so we were there first, but, but they, they still trumped us because of their federal authority under federal law. I want to make sure that everybody's aware too that they are paying a portion of that relocation cost. I think the total cost is roughly 2.3 million and I believe they're paying maybe 35% uh, of that, so. All right, moving on. Um, we come to a Goddard Street, 50th Street, 55th Street to Johnson Drive. This is our third SIP project on the CIP. Um, this will again be a reconstruction and widening with sidewalk and trails storm drainage improvements, and street lighting improvements. 2021, we have park restroom facility improvements at three of our parks. Um, the original, original restrooms were built in the 1980s and they don't meet current ADA standards. Um, those three parks are Gum Springs, Swarner, and Herman Laird. 2022 Monticello phase two um, from 71st Street where the phase one ended down to 7900 block. Um, this will be a completely new road. Um, there is not a current road there today. Um, it'll be built to our minor arterial standards with new sidewalks, new trails, new storm drainage, new street lights along the entire route, um, and also a fiber conduit installed for city, for city use. 2023, uh, Monrovia, 55th Street to Johnson Drive. Um, this is our fourth SIP project. Um, again, it'll be a reconstruction and widening 
sidewalk and trail improvements, storm drainage improvements, and lighting. 2023 Midland Drive, Lackman to Elmridge. Um, this is a mill and overlay project of the area. Um, the street, it, it'll be repair and replacement of damaged curb, damaged sidewalk, um, any storm drainage that's in the area that needs to be evaluated and repaired will be done at the time. And then a, a final two inch mill and overlay of the asphalt service. And then again, with any CIP projects, we are doing um, lighting improvements with along with those. 2024 um, is Johnson Drive and I-435 signalization. This was originally in the last year CIP in, in the year of 2020. We have moved it out due to Flum Road needing some more attention. Um, the traffic signals at both the ramps on Johnson Drive will be interconnected with Johnson and Renner to do some, some uh, operation green light type stuff. Um, working we are currently working with our consultant doing a study on the area um, looking at possible grants to do some extra work there too Ricky uh, they're getting this prepared a little bit in case they end up tearing out the ramps and all over at 435 in Midland okay that's what I was hoping <laughs> And Doug Whitaker again. It's it's a combination, uh, Councilman. If two, one is we're looking at counts, and yes, if they come in and do those bridges, um, redo the bridges at Midland, that we would need signals. We could work with Kate out on that instead of just putting in temporary signals. And we so, could get the crisscross up at Johnson Drive versus down there where they were going to block yeah, the, the road. Yeah. So okay. they would. So we would have traffic control there. The second is what we're looking at is for economic development. And I can't say, we've got a plan, uh, traffic engineer, uh, Kevin Manning isn't here tonight, that we've got the study is done. It's in KDOT's hands. We don't know of any reason why KDOT wouldn't agree with what we have, but I don't want to say this is what we're going to do until we have, because obviously it's the federal highway that we're dealing with in this case. But we're real close with coming out with something we can share. I've shared part of it with the city manager, but shortly we should be able to, you know, share it you know, publicly as, as long as KDOT approves that. Thank you. Twenty twenty five we have a complete rebuild of Midland Drive from Shawnee Mission Parkway to I four thirty five. Um, this will be reconstruction and widening, curb and gutter installation on a ditch road, uh, sidewalk and trail facilities, adequate storm drainage facilities, and street lighting improvements. 2025 is our fifth and final street improvement project with the current sales tax funding. Um, this will be McEnany Drive from Neiman to Bond. Um, reconstruction and widening, sidewalk and trails, storm drainage, and lighting. 2025, we also have a master trail plan for to build out approximately one mile of 10-foot multi-use trail. Um, our parks department is doing some master planning in the near future and those locations will be established at that time. So beyond 2025, we have a couple of funding sources that are sunsetting. We have our parks and pipe sales tax that sunsets in early 2025 and then our pavement sales tax that also sunsets in early 2025. So beyond 2025, um, our CIP is reduced to maintenance only, except for a couple of street projects. And uh, the maintenance is numbers are, are definitely reduced due to the, the loss of that funding source. Um, we will be doing um, some renewal work on those, well, asking for renewals of those sales taxes here probably two years out of the sunset um, just so we can go through a, a uh, election process with that. Um, the street projects that are on the CIP from 2026 to 2029 are what we have submitted to Mark for their 2050 transportation plan. Um, those were internally prioritized based on some conversations about economic development and 
community development. So the next steps of this process are the, to go to the planning commission meeting on May 20th to do the same presentation and then incorporating comments from tonight's meeting and that meeting to go to the city council meeting on May 28th for approval. At this time, I welcome any discussion or questions. All right, thank you, Matt. Jim? Yes, one question. When we go to 2020, it says, added traffic signal, signal at Renner and 79th Street. Now, that's right. That's Shawnee, Lenexa, it's a, right. and, but anyway, yeah. um, I assume that we're gonna share, if there are three people we're gonna share, we're not gonna do it all by ourselves. I'll let Doug Worker answer that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that was a, a request. As you know, the park redid their entrance so that it lines up with 79. So now we have an actual, you know, mm -hmm. standard intersection instead of that split monster that was there. With that, we're working with Lenexa. Lenexa will take the lead on this, and so we would enter into an agreement and basically provide our portion of the funds to Lenexa. They will do the construction. I know I don't have the answer on that, but we can have that information for you. The park board, I believe, had a meeting last week to talk about what their funding portion was going to be, and I haven't heard what, you know, what they agreed on. Uh, from that standpoint. And then going forward, basically what our understanding is Lenexa will maintain it. It's just that once it comes up for replacement again, they'd ask us for a portion, you know, our portion, you know, going forward. But I don't think we're gonna have a real maintenance uh, obligation going forward. Lenexa has just said they would maintain it since what, two thirds of it is theirs. Okay, thank you. Okay, any other discussion by the council? Okay, seeing none, is, in, is there anyone from the public who would like to speak? Sir, yeah, Rod, if you just want to come up and state your name and address for the record. Rod Hauk, 12807 West 7th Terrace. My concern is for the uh, Flum 2020 project from Midland to the Southern City Line, and particularly the What's going to happen? Traffic control at 71st in Flum currently is a four-way stop. Uh, just about a week ago, one of our residents of Listowel Park had a very near serious accident there. Fortunately, she didn't see the van. She she did see the van that barreled all the way through. My concern is putting traffic signals there uh, at 71st and Quivera, which I've commonly come out of my neighborhood to 71st and Quivira. It's amazing how many red light runners we have on Quivira. Mm -hmm. If we put traffic signals at 71st and Flum, we're gonna have the same problem there. So uh, Mike Frizzell uh, allowed me to use some information he developed. Fortunately, we don't have an overhead, but I have in my hand uh, some literature that uh, Mike had developed on uh, flashing LED. Maybe we do. <laughs> I was gonna say, I think we do. <laughs> the first uh, thing that Mike found, uh, one source was a, a stop sign with blinking LEDs around it. It is solar powered. Uh, you may not be able to read but what it does. It reduces blow through. That means people running the stop sign by more than 50%. It reduces incomplete stops. It's visible for up to two miles at, even at nighttime. The other thing would be to, further away from the intersection, would be to uh, have warning signs. There are also LED indicating a stop sign ahead. And the same thing is true. Uh, it's solar powered, so there's no, no electricity required. So uh, I would like staff to really consider how are you going to take care of traffic flow at that intersection. Uh, tonight I learned about black, the closure of Blackfish for the sewer project. Chief Moser, I'm concerned that we're going to get extra traffic on Flom because of that closure. So I hope you got your crews watching that intersection even more carefully during that construction. 
That's all I had. All right. Thank you, sir. Is there anyone else from the public who would like to speak to this item? Okay. Seeing none, this item was also for informational purposes only and concludes our agenda. I will accept a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. I have a, okay. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion passes. We are adjourned.